Alright, well... We're definitely going to be putting one... Oh no, didn't. Okay, we've dug so f deep at this point. There we go. Alright, as long as they don't top deck an Ugin, we're fine. My fair citizens of Sodium City, we have the sun. So this deck archetype is super fun. It is a janky enchantment based control deck with a whole lot of fun tricks and a ton of card advantage and a crazy win condition to boot. Now the win condition for this deck is actually two cards. It's gonna be Brash Taunter and Star of Extinction. So Brash Taunter is a 1-1 one, one indestructible for five mana, which is kind of shitty, but whenever the Brash Taunter is dealt damage, this is in general, it deals that much damage to target opponent, which is really, really cool because we can do fun stuff like using Star of Extinction. So Star of Extinction is a seven mana sorcery to where you destroy target land and it deals 20 damage to everything on the battlefield, all creatures, all planeswalkers, all that stuff. And since Brash Taunter is a 1-1 one, one indestructible creature, you're going to do 20 damage to Brash Taunter, which then does 20 damage to target opponent, which basically kills them. Obviously, if they have more life than 20, it's going to put a damper on things. You're going to have to cast more than one Star of Extinction, or off chance, you can also fight other creatures with Brash Taunter, because most decks that are going to gain a ton of life also are using a ton of creatures. So Brash Taunter has a three mana tap ability to fight target creature. This helps a lot. It can't block uh, any type of tramplers, but it can block a big dick like white angels, which most of the time that's what you have to worry about when we're talking about life gain over 20 life. Now, as for the ramp, we essentially just have Wolf Willow Haven and Gift of Paradise. So Wolf Willow Haven is a two mana aura, enchant a land, add an additional green source for whenever you tap the land for mana. Really, really cool. It's nice, you can pay five mana late game, sacrifice it to create a two, two wolf token. You can only activate on your turn, which sucks, so no combat tricks with it, but it's something you can use late game when you don't need the mana, right? But it is a two mana enchantment, which is nice because it's guaranteed mana on turn two. But then we also have Gift of Paradise, which is a three mana enchantment that you enchant a land once again. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life, which is awesome because you need life in this deck. Enchanted land has tap, add two mana of any one color. This is great because we are running a three color deck and it is a color that doesn't have a triome in it. Therefore, we don't have lands that tap for one of each color. Gift of Paradise really, really helps smooth out that situation. Now, I don't know if you would actually consider Birth of Miletus a ramp card, but it is there. It's a two mana enchantment. You get to search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it and put it in your hand. Again, you're not actually putting it into play, but you get to guarantee your next land drop being on turn three. It is only a plane, so it is restrictive. However, it's still a very good card because the next turn you create a 0-4 wall, which is amazing early on in the game against aggro. It's hard to punch through a 0-4. Then the turn after that, you gain two life, which is even better because if you're going against aggro, once again, gaining life is amazing no matter how little it is. So for our card advantage, we are using Enchanter's Presence. This is just a three mana enchantment. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. This is just great because even if they counter the spell, you still get to draw a card to replenish whatever you cast it. Amazing. Now, since almost everything in our deck is an enchantment, obviously anything we cast is going to draw us a card. Now, I highly recommend you don't play more than probably two, maybe three on the battlefield at any one time, because once you start drawing that many cards, you are just going to deck out. Once you have two of them on the battlefield, it's really difficult to kind of restrain yourself and not deck out. So keep a really close eye on that. I would say no more than two on the battlefield, but since it's your primary main way of getting card advantage, you have to run four in your deck. So it's kind of a give and take. 
The next card for our card advantage is going to be Calyx Destiny's Hand. This is just a four mana, four loyalty planeswalker. Has the plus one of look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an enchantment card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Now this is amazing because obviously you just do plus one, look at the top four, get an enchantment. Since hopefully at this point in time we have an enchantress presence down, we can then cast our enchantments drawing cards so our calyx gets us an enchantment we play it we draw a card from enchantress presence and it just gets ridiculous we get so much card advantage we start finding exactly what we need and exactly what we want and just kind of spirals out of control then calyx also has the minus three of exile target creature or enchantment you don't control and until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield so you're going to target someone's creature and enchantment and you're going to put it under an enchantment you control if you don't control any enchantments is minus three doesn't do anything so you have to make sure you have enchantments out and again that's why we have so many enchantments it has a lot of synergy with that and then calyx has his minus seven which is very difficult to get to and most of the time you'll never really need it uh, but it has the minus seven of return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield now it's possible we could start running cleansing nova because we do have problems with enchantments so cleansing nova is an option that we could use and then just do the minus seven from calyx i've actually never been able to get the minus seven off on calyx so uh, that's just something to kind of soak in uh, it's possible that we may start running Tefri's Protection on this for that exact reason, but who knows. Now we do have a little bit of a, a mini combo or a synergy with the deck, and that is going to be using Sunbird's Invocation and basically any enchantment that's in the deck. So Sunbird's Invocation is a six mana enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards from your library where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You may cast a revealed card this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost. Put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is just amazing. Again, if you have Enchantress Presence out and you have Sunbird's Invocation out, we're talking late game. You're going to go ahead and cast something like Haphazard Bombardment, which is a six man enchantment. You're going to look at the top six cards of your library. Since you have an Enchantress Presence out, you're drawing a card from casting Haphazard Bombardment. And then let's say the top six cards you find, oh, hey, I Gift of Paradise, I need some life. So you cast Gift of Paradise from your graveyard or from your library, which again, triggers Enchantress Presence, which draws you a second card. So this is just ridiculous card advantage. So you're casting something for free, but you're also drawing cards from Enchantress Presence at the same exact time. And it's, it gets out of control. Super late game, you should never lose if you have this stuff on the board. The other part of this combo, again, is going to be Sunbird's Invocation, but with Starve Extinction and Brash Taunter, which again is our win condition if you looked at the earlier part. So what we're going to do if we have Starve Extinction in our hand, but not a Brash Taunter, what we can try to do is cast Starve Extinction when we have Sunbird's Invocation out. So Starve Extinction is a seven mana card. We're going to look at the top seven cards for our library. If there's a Brash Taunter in there, we actually get to cast Brash Taunter from our library. And then the Starve Extinction resolves, which does 20 damage to everything and obviously including their face. So we can technically just win off of that. So if we do like a turn two Wolf Willow Haven and then a, a turn three Gift of Paradise into a Wolf Willow Haven and then turn four, uh, I think it's, yeah, turn four Sunbird's Invocation, turn five Starve Extinction with the Brash Taunter, you can win turn five in theory. Uh, it's not common. Obviously, we also have 81 cards in the deck, so it's not normal, but it does, it is. It does happen. It can happen. I would recommend adding in more Brash Taunters if you want to make that more consistent. Uh, adding in another Star of Extinction. Possibly think about going almost completely mono red. Uh, that is a, a deck that I've done in the past as well. Just something to think about. Now I will say that this deck definitely isn't the truth, but it's not garbage either. So I wouldn't say I would dare you to, to take this and play it, but I would definitely recommend it. Make some changes kind of around the meta that you're running into right now. Uh, like I said, I would probably take the list I have right here. Uh, I had to move around a lot of the board wipes because I added more board wipes. I was running into a ton of aggro, and then I had to take some of them out 
because I was just not drawing permanents to draw cards from Enchanter's Presence. So I took the three that I added, the three board wipes I added, I took those three out and then added three Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Now they're definitely not the same thing by any means, but it still takes care of a lot of issues that we had, which was higher mana value cards on the battlefield, but also draws us cards from Enchantress Presence, and then we can get back our Yorian if we need to, or our Calyx, which we will definitely need to all the time if he's ever in the graveyard. If you want the current deck list, then go ahead and hit that card button. It's like at the top right of the video, wherever that is. You will also see the text version in the description below, as well as another link to my Aetherhub site, which has all of my deck lists in it. If you want to see more Brash Taunter means, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, bell notification. I do come out with videos seven days a week. You don't want to miss a single one. And as for yesterday's comment question of the day, I asked you, what card in Historic Anthologies 5 do you want me to brew around first? Here are your answers. And if you want your comment featured in these videos, make sure that you answer the comment question of the day every single day, seven days a week in the comment section below. Stay salty and enjoy the games. All right. So this Naya Brash Taunter Sunbird's Invocation deck is actually pretty fun. I played it a bit on stream today and it did pretty well. Actually, I can recall. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not amazing, but it's not bad. Uh, after like 26 games, as of right now, after 26 games, instead of 58%, so it's 15 and 11 right now. Keep. Snap keep. We're on the play. We have a basic land to put the Gift of Paradise on. Ooh, I wonder if... Because that's Diamond 1. We might be the final boss for this person. Which would kind of suck for us. Because our only removal right now is Settle the Wreckage. We have the mana for it, but we missed two land drops. And it's pretty expensive. So if... We top deck a land, I will probably Mirari's Wake. Uh, because that puts us in Star of Extinction territory. Which is nice. Uh, well, I can't now. Because, uh, 23 for a, yeah. So I can Calyx, but the Allosaurus Shepherd fucks me, right? So they get a bunch of fucking lands. We ramp them like a motherfucker. But we get to prevent them from doing super cool things. I would really like to get a land. Really, really, really like to get a land. Um, I mean, I'll take a board wipe, but... This has to go. Yeah, I mean, we've top deck... Seven mana, a six mana, a six mana, <laughs> and four mana. We top decked all that. We had all this in our opening hand. That's what sucks. Like, we had a decent opening hand. Like, it was fine. This is bad. They're going to draw nothing but gas. All right, so now we just need, like, a Wolf Willow Haven or another Gift of Paradise or something. We need something. So my Calyx is dead. Okay. I got a Shepherd. This is really unfortunate. So they can activate their... Am I dead? I might be dead. I can still activate. Is that six? Is it six to activate or eight? Actually, I don't remember now. 
sick. 19. Yeah, so they're doing 19 damage to me. 10 4 by. Yeah, because, like, if I top decked a land at literally any point, like, I still haven't top decked a land. And I don't have any enchantments that get me out of this. Look skyward and receive the gifts of the gods. Fuck. That sucks. Yeah. Oh, we got, we got mana screwed. I drew every single one of my expensive spells, none of my cheap spells, and I didn't draw any lands, and I had three in my opening hand. The chances of that is just abysmal. Abysmal. Yeah, so it wasn't even that... Yeah, it, it wasn't even that we misplayed or we died on turn four because we didn't. If we had a decent hand, everything. It was just... The sheer top deck was garbage. We had the win. Or we we basically had the we had the one. Yeah. Alright, so now we just need to make sure that Well we can't really make sure, but can't really make sure that we're not getting mana screwed, but we can really just hope for the best. Just hope for the best, that's all. So either that or get more board wipes. See this is still really good. So we have everything that we need. We go first again. We have a turn one, a turn two, and a turn three-ish. So we can just foretell this. Uh, is it a Gruel deck or another elf deck? Everyone's playing, there's so many elf decks right now. Okay, it's definitely not normal. Two, three, four, five. So Mirari's Wake next turn, which is great. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to take that five. You gonna fight it? Uh... Okay, so I have to, like, fit out my deck. Because I cannot get any more of that shit. Alright, so we take 6 damage here minimum. Uh, if they have a henge, then that sucks. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is Creature this? spells you control can't be countered. That's kind of cool. Whoa! I mean, I'll take it. Mm, I don't really get any super value out of this because I didn't have a, like a gift of paradise on the battlefield or a birth of Miletus or resetting counters on Calyx or anything. Like, I'm just gonna pop you in the air every single turn, yeah. You kind of blew your load for no reason. We take it, we take it. Hmm. I'm just gonna go up against mono green all day, huh? Sure. Why not? Why not? I wonder how well it was doing against mono green beforehand. It's a good question. We'll figure it out. We'll go up at the end of the videos. I always go through the the stats of the of the deck and how well it performed. So if you're ever interested in that stuff, it'll always be at the end. It kind of goes over uh, exactly what decks it was good against, what decks it wasn't good against, things of that nature. Um, probably some of the the card changes. A lot of times I'll go over the card changes that I would have added. All right, so I can Calyx next turn. I can birth to draw a card. Uh, the of fuck. Will never lose. All right, yeah, I need to draw cards, get lands. Hmm. Uh, 
Enchantress Presence is only when I cast an enchantment. The problem with this right now is Solemnity, exactly. <clears throat> so, I can exile one of them. But that's it, right? And then it dies, and then I have to do it again. So they kill the Calyx, but we get Solemnity. I have to do it again. Hmm. You hold no power over me. It's interesting. I am blessed by Nix. I'll definitely draw cards from this. Yeah. I'll put this down second. Um, I would rather get everything on the board as much as possible. Fortunately, I don't have four damage. We do have Subtle to get rid of that Gideon, which is nice. Other good thing about this is now I can Yorian, uh, which blinks the Earth. Okay. Uh, I can still activate loyalty abilities, I believe. Yeah. Right? There aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities. Should have actually got the overwhelming splendor. Yeah, I should have got the overwhelming splendor. But you didn't. At least we get the settle though. But I can only imagine, I mean, they have two more cards in their hand. One of them could be a Solemnity, one of them could be a, another Gideon. They have a lot of potentials. A lot of potential options, right? I feel like they could have Arden Veiled a couple times. They might have Sanctity. Okay, so I can no longer target them. Let's go ahead and do this. Gets our land for the turn. Draw a couple here. I would really like to get not lands. Yeah. How many cards are there? Okay, we got the castle. It's kind of cool. Discard a single card. Let's discard the shock land. I would prefer not to have to shock myself. Uh, my wall is a 1 1 that can now attack. Which is very good. We like the fact that our wall can attack. It's a good part about Overwhelming Splendor for us is because our only real creatures are lands. We do have Yorian, but, you know. We also just have a fucking grip of goddamn lands. I just can't cast spells with the chosen name, prevent all damage. Yorian? Okay, sure. Perfectly fine with that. Uh, no. Nope. So 
Sunbirds. Should have called Haphazard Bombardment, I believe. Uh, Brush Taunter doesn't do anything. That's three. His ability is a minus three. Wait. Get your ass back here, boy. But I wasn't done winning yet. Yeah. Alright. Hopefully the internet is a little bit more stable. I didn't do anything yet, but... Yeah, I had a tech come out... Yesterday? So they did some type of upgrade to the line. Allegedly. And... Uh, they did that on... It was either... Thursday between midnight and 6 a.m. Or... It was Friday between midnight and 6 a.m. I don't, I don't recall exactly which one it was. But after that, I've just had fucking horrible internet issues. Like ever since. Okay. I'm actually going to ramp here. Because once again, I didn't top deck any land or ramp the top decked my most expensive card. Or one of my most expensive cards. <sighs> this is fucking horrible. Alright, so I still don't have a red source, and I have pretty much only red cards in my hand. Game two. Deals one to that. Take an extra two. Five, six, go down to 14. Everything costs one less. I mean, I don't even have a fucking board wipe. That is not gonna fucking help me. Take eight damage minimum. But yeah, I mean now if I don't top deck a land, dead. Or top deck a board wipe. Uh, if they have a gem razor. Yeah, they know that I'm dead next turn regardless. So that's swinging in for six now, or eight, six, seven, eight, twelve. That's swinging. Yeah, they're swinging in for twelve. Go down to eight. Oh, that's not good. Not good in the slightest. All right. Uh, there's just a shit ton of aggro. It's basically, right now, it's nothing but aggro. Um, so I'm gonna take out two sunbirds and a star. Add in... Another day of judgment, another settle, and a doom scar. So we're gonna add in three more wraths. Hopefully that fixes it, because we went up against elves, mono green aggro, white, or nine lives, Mono Black Discard, and then Gruel Stompy. And then, so two of them weren't really aggro. Uh, Mono Black Discard is like kind of whatever. Uh, but on the latter, it just seems like it's constant aggro everywhere right now. If you want to see me build and play all these decks live, then go ahead and make sure to follow me over at twitch.tv slash striderstone. I stream five days a week, every day except Monday and Thursday. Schedule's in the description below, or you can click on the card at the top right hand corner of the video. It'll take you right on over there. So yeah, I don't even know if I finished my sentence. But yeah, or I don't even know if I finished my story. So the internet's been having issues ever since they upgraded the line. They did another like line type of upgrade back in March or April and the same thing happened. I just had intermittent issues the whole time. And 
of course there's like zero notes in their system about it. It's like they just come out, and they're like, oh yeah, we have uh, notes that we sent somebody out there. I'm like, okay, well, what What did they, what's in the notes? Oh, oh, there's no notes. What the fuck, what do you mean there's no goddamn notes? <laughs> Who the fuck? Who fixes issues? Cause like I had three texts come out here before anybody even fucking fixed the issue. And now the issue's back. And they have no notes on how they fixed it beforehand. I have like a general idea of what they did, but... Uh, next turn's kind of nice because we get to gift a paradise into a birth of Miletus, And then we have a land and we get to bombardment. The turn after that. So it's like a turn four bombardment. It's pretty nice against a teamer ramp deck. It's definitely not bad, but I just don't know how much it's going to. We're going to have to top deck more land destruction. Maybe I should have used this to shuffle. So we're at a 39% chance to get a land right now. Okay, I guess. So they're definitely ramping into something fucking crazy. I don't know if that'll be tapped. Okay. Ooh, I should've went for the green sources. Okay. Yeah, I should've went for the green, because it can ramp with green. Alright. Well, luckily it didn't hit a blue, because they have another blue. They don't have another red, so they can't ultimatum. At least. Well, now they can. I, can't. I mean, yeah, there's nothing I can do at that point. Yeah, I mean, cultivate, migration path, migration path. I have an 80 card deck, as do they. But I only, I have four haphazard bombardments, and that's... See, what the fuck is this? What is happening? Fuck knows. <sighs> Getting flooded every fucking game. Six, seven, eight, nine. Jesus. And they they can almost just hard cast Olmog. I've destroyed two lands and they can almost hard cast Olmog. They can hard cast Olmog. And just go boo boo. Yeah, just like fucking ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and just like gutted my entire deck because of it. Ugin just destroys enchantment decks. And I took out a Starvix. Why the fuck are we still getting lands? Oh my god. Uh Alright, well. Let's see. Let's see what they got. And we can still hit the Ugin. Unless they have removal for it. They could Brazen Borrower, they could... Uh, they can put down their own Yorian, which we don't have removal for. Because uh, even if we top deck a Calyx, we can't do anything about it. Uh, they could have a Shock, a Bone Crusher Giant. Okay. Uh, that's not too bad then. Definitely not what we wanted to see. I think I should have kept that in my hand just in case we draw an Enchantress Presence. Oh, 
Um, yeah, I mean, if I don't get a star of extinction. Fuck, and I got an enchanter's presence. Oh my god. It's like I'm just punting. So this might make them minus three. Maybe. Maybe they don't care. I mean, they know what I have in my hand. It's just the planes. I can only assume they don't really care at this point. They just ult next turn. And they're like free and clear. Uh, I'm up to a 37% chance to get a land because I didn't top deck one the last two turns, so. Oh. Oh, it's like all basics. So just cultivate migration path, migration path, cultivate. This is some like horrible deck. It's just it works against us because it's like we're we're based on interaction and they have nothing for us to interact with. We're a land destruction deck and they're just gonna ramp like a motherfucker. Like destroyed two lands. They have all of this. Oh, I should have put those on the blue sources. Well, we sniped the Ugin some fucking how. Just hope they didn't top deck another Ugin. Did I go up against this person earlier? We just got a shit ton of life out of that. Okay, I'm glad I foretold, even though they don't have any removal. I wonder if they Yori into Blink that. That would actually be really interesting. They did not. Alright, we have no hand, they have no hand. They have all gas in their deck at this point, pretty much. 6, 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17. We don't want to see that perfect. That's what we want to see. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with this. Star of Extinction off the top! 5% chance? Nope. Uh, let's just ping him down a little bit. Ping him down a little bit. Just a little bit. Because if they do gain life somehow, then obviously Star of Extinction is kind of necessary. We haven't gotten any ramps. Oh, no, we did. Just all got exiled. All right. Drawn two cards now. Please no double land. Duh. Not necessarily what we wanted. Come on, star. Come on, star. Star. Two, three. Fuck. 
Alright, well... We're definitely going to be putting one... Oh no, didn't. Okay, we've dug so fucking deep at this point. There we go. Alright, as long as they don't top deck an Ugin, we're fine. So obviously we can't, I mean, we're blowing up two lands, not blowing up a bajillion. Uh, three, four, ten, eleven, twelve, three, four, two, fifteen. They have fifteen lands, they could do whatever the fuck they want to do. I don't like to see that. Land go. Just land go. Haha! Just in case. Lotus, show me my path. This will not be how my story ends. Oh, that was fucking close. Jesus Christ. That was, yeah, that was a close game. I thought. This is why you don't surrender. This is the exact reason why you don't surrender. That was way too fucking close. Way too fucking close. not turn one so I have to get a white source unfortunately hmm yeah at least I think I do so much um, no, fuck it. We'll go green. Really hoping I didn't draw another white card. These don't have discard. That's asking so much from a Grixis. I never beat Grixis. Uh... Like, if it's a memory lapse, that kind of sucks. If it's a brazen barber, that also sucks. I don't know why they didn't do anything. Okay. Fucking hate that goddamn pixie. Get that fucking pixie out of my face. <laughs> no. Goes from, like, extreme flood to extreme. Ugh. Sure. Dude. Man, that's brutal. Both bullets. Oh, fuck. It's both bullets, and we still are missing all of our land drops. And it's the wrong color. Yeah, this is fucking horribly bad. I don't give a fuck about that. Uh, I might just die here. Uh, so they kill the cat. Uh, they the thing is they have brazen borrower, so anything that we exile with Calyx, they just fucking get it back, which is very bad. Because they just bounce it, and then it comes back. 
This is such a bad matchup for us. This is like... I mean, every time we go against Grixis, I th I'd probably have a worse matchup or a worse win percentage against Grixis than any other deck. Um, well, no other land. Let's see, actually. Now I'm interested. Uh, if they don't have targeted removal or a counter spell, they lose a lot of shit on their board. Like, if they don't get rid of that Marari's Wake. They either have to get rid of the Marari's Wake, have a discard spell for my Star of Extinction, or a counter spell. One of the three, which Grixis has all of those. So, let's see. Like it. Doesn't really do anything. And we get an extra one. Get an extra white source for that authority. Get another card draw for that. It's good, sh good, good, good shit. Uh, we took out one of their blue sources, one of their open blue sources, so they couldn't actually flash in that brazen borrower. Ugh. All right, so we have to birth. Like we have to, have to, have to birth. Uh, no, I'm actually dead. Because Brazen Borrower. You just flash from Brazen Borrower and I'm fucked. Uh, except Gift Paradise. Gift Paradise saves us. So I'm going to have to Enchanter's Presence into Birth and hope that one of those gives us a Gift Paradise. It's kind of my only option. Two lands. Didn't really want two more fucking lands. <sighs> Do you think they swing into settle? <laughs> Do you think they have counter spell? I don't know. Alright. They swung into settle without counter spell backup. Which is great. We like that. Um if they play Bullis, we have a lot of shit to exile that we just don't give a fuck about. Ugh. Uh if they have another one, we're dead. Come on. Give me something that's not a fucking land. Not really something I wanted, but it's better than it's better than dying, I suppose. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I need the two life, that's why I didn't exile that one. Ooh. Okay. Uh, they don't have enough to do it a second time.
They have Bone Crusher, but they're tapped out. I gain two, so I'll lose three. I'll gain two. That puts me at four. I think we're okay. do not like the fact that this is happening. So we can technically kill... Uh, that's fine, we'll get rid of that Wolf of Haven. I want to keep the Wrath, because if they do have a Croza in their hand... They have a Banefire? Oh. Oh. That is... Oh no. If they have a Croza, if they just got a Croza out of that. Oh no. Nazis. That's bad too. Oh, this is so... This is everything. Everything is wrong. Where the fuck is that? Where? We need something. Mm -hmm. I just, I have to play around. I have to play around Croza. I can't not. You fucking kidding me? God damn it. Ugh, it's so fucking uh, frustrating. It's like we have our card draw engine. We drew six cards in a turn and five of those were fucking lands. This is what happens when you're running an enchantment deck and you add in a bunch of spells. So we had to add in board wipes because we were just getting run over by aggro. And now we just get run over by everything else. The remedy for this... Probably taking out that, that, and that. Kind of like what we had before. But add in... I don't really want to say... I mean, Ixon's Binding kind of works, but we might want to do, like... Maybe we just do Elspeth Conqueror's Death. It raises our curve a little bit, but that might be what we need to do. We'll actually draw cards off it when we cast it. We can kind of just throw it out there if we need to, because it still taxes them. In that case, it wouldn't have really helped us because they had Leyline of the Void out really early, but... We would have been able to exile one of their boluses, right? So we might have been able to do something. Tax him for a turn, maybe slow him down a little bit. Uh, would have drawn two cards. Got it. I don't know. There's a couple things. That might that might have helped. I don't, I don't fucking know. But, again, never fucking be Grixis. Never. Oh yeah, I want to I wanna check that. Okay, 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 okay. So in ranked, where is Grixis? Yeah, 5 and 14. Boros. Yeah, so Boros aggro, I'm fucking 8 and 25 against. So Boros destroys me, and so does Grixis. It just, I, I don't know, it just does. I get run over by Sultai. I don't actually know what the time frame is on this. It says current set, Strixhaven, colorless, pretty much stomp them, four color, doing okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, that, it's fucking brutal. Look how many, how many red decks. Red and green. There's so many aggro decks. Overall matches, it's just mono red, mono white, mono green, mono black. It's just a fucking problem. See, this is what I'm saying. We run into so much aggro on the ladder and this just kind of shows it right there this is what we run into the majority of the time and is it is more aggro now gruel aggro um i'm this is probably more control than it is auras but i'm sure there's auras in here like quite a bit uh oros aggro rakdos aggro rakdos sack 
Remember? Uh, Demir Control, or Demir Rogues, probably. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Golgari something. Mono Blue Tempo. Fucking hate Mono Blue Tempo. But yeah, Grix, I just always lose to Grixis. Fucking hate that shit. The end of the day, the deck went 18 and 15, which isn't fantastic. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't a bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't good at the same time. It wasn't really anything. It was just kind of meh. Um, it feels like it had all the answers to various aggro decks, but as you can kind of see, it just fell flat or went about 50% against most aggro decks, which I don't think it really should have. It should have technically stomped every aggro deck. Uh, we lost to every Grixis deck, which is super sad. Uh, we pretty much always lose to Grixis no matter what. Just something that happens. However, the rest of this is pretty normal. Uh, we've ran into a ton of elves recently, so you will want to watch out for that. One of these wins was against a mono green mid range and not actual mono green elves. Um, so, what I ended up doing is I ended up adding more board wipes. But after I added more board wipes, it, there got to a point to where I wasn't drawing like any cards off Enchantress Presence or the only thing I was drawing was lands. And then I would end up top decking a board wipe and not being able to draw cards off Enchantress Presence because we had so many board wipes. It just became a shit show and there wasn't really anything that we could do about it. So after i started playing and kind of getting a little bit more familiar with it i believe maybe taking out a couple of the board wipes that i added maybe putting in like an elspeth conquers death or splashing blue for battle of frost and fire that's also an option and a pretty decent option i wouldn't mind that it's something i would experiment with so if you end up taking this definitely try that out because that's probably going to be the route that i would go if i were to continue doing this especially because it also helps with the brash taunter damage because i realized in one of the games we ended up just decking out because we ended up using all of our star of extinctions before we had a brash taunter out which is kind of a fucking problem and considering we don't have any anger of the gods or uh anything else if it was a control deck which it was we just lose there's literally nothing we can do we don't have any win conditions it's just we're, we're fucked right so we got to fix that but other than that deck was fine we lost a couple games because of that i would probably say like five or six games we probably lost because of that i would say it's about a third um so the deck could be way better if you make those minor tweaks but i just didn't have enough time to actually test all that stuff Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to this point, it means you either really enjoyed the video or you fell asleep and I'm waking you up now. <laughs> either way, thank you for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, come out with videos seven days a week.